Well, you had something happen, I believe, that's a writer's worst nightmare, and that is a script of yours was stolen? Yeah, I had a script stolen. Um, it was, I have two scenarios that you can say the word stolen, but the one that really, I think, affected me deeply was I trusted people that wanted me to write, and I was 19. This was my first like hire for um, film, like a film script that I'm being hired to write. And I worked with people that I really trusted, and they didn't do the wrong thing, but they didn't protect me to make sure the wrong thing didn't happen, or even ask me questions to make sure I was thinking of it. And um, the film, they told me originally, they were like, well, this is not really where we want to go. We'll circle back, you know, maybe a year from now because we're going to go with another idea. And I was like, okay, no problem. I enjoyed the experience. I got to write a, a film script start to finish and just kind of waited. And then I saw the film. Um, it was uh, maybe about two or three years later. And it was a little different, but it was, <laughs> it was like, that, okay, I wrote that line. You know, one of those moments. So I think it was a horrible experience, but I can't say I'm glad it happened. But a lot of goodness came out of it. It caused me to be so much more prudent and so much more watchful and wise, which is great for personal use. But then also being someone on the other end now, hiring writers and so forth, and even something I'm working on right now in pre-production, it's like I want to educate every young writer because it's something that no one's going to, I can't say no one, but there, there aren't many people that are not going to want to use you for your gift. And that's a good thing. But you got to make sure they're using you in a way that you're comfortable being used. So it's like, it's fine. Your gifts are here to be used and shown. So don't feel like, oh, they're using me. That's fine. But just put limits and, and boundaries on that. And that comes in with legal. So most of these young writers, most of them, unless they got into a place where they kind of shot up to the top, where they can have an agent and a lawyer and this and that, and somebody watching out for them, they have no clue what paperwork needs to be put in place and how that paperwork needs to be worded to where they're protected. And because of what I went through, I researched that. And I didn't just research it like, now I know, but I also always bounce off a lawyer. It's the, even when I'm giving advice, I'm like, hey, this guy's in with this. Is this is, does this clause mean this? Because that's what I'm thinking. Um, so just being very, very watchful of it. And also, I'm like super protective of writers. Like it's like, argh, like it's like a mama bear thing that comes out. And um, a project I'm working on right now, the writer just like called me just, just a couple days ago. Like, I just wanted to thank you. Like, you have been there for me every step of the way. You weren't even on the project really yet, because this is like way before pre-production. This is just like conversations. And he was like, I just felt so safe. And I couldn't have had a better uh, compliment than that the writer that was around me felt safe because I experienced the other way around. So I want to make sure that anyone in my presence, writers, producers, whatever it is, they feel safe. And they feel that they can trust, like I did, but then also get the outcome that their trust actually mattered and it was the right person to trust. And I never want to like hurt that in someone. That's like something that I'm very mindful of. And I don't think there's, there's an opportunity for us to make bad decisions. Like every person has that thing, like maybe greed or whatever the thing is that you see great people fall. When you have already experienced what great people do to when they like what they can do in power, when you've been on the other end of that, when you get some power, you're going to be more mindful of how you treat people. So I can say that that, experience of having a, strip, a script stolen makes me a better leader, makes me a better producer, makes me a better writer, makes me a, me a better person. Because I know these people weren't bad people, but they saw an opportunity. They're like, well, we don't have to really pay her anymore. We don't have to really bring her in. She's not owed any points. Let's just go. Don't even tell her. Like That can happen when you have greed. So I, I don't look at them. Um, I don't think of them as horrible people. I think of them as people that succumb to, to greed or um, because they could, you know, we all want a sense of power and they use it the wrong way. So it helps me use it in the right way, um, more often and with more intention. What's, what are some tips aside from having legal look over a contract or even emails? What, what are some signs, like a red flag that, that a young writer should be um, aware of? I think signs of um, red flags for young writers or any writer is people asking you for things that you, one, don't understand, or two, you didn't agree with already. So it's like, usually how it happens, they kind of sneak it in there. It's like, okay, we have an agreement. And then it's like, hey, can you also do such and such? And young writers especially, they're like, I can't wait to do these things. So they just do it. Don't do it. 
be okay. Or even start writing it, start working on it, but don't tell them, don't say, okay. Don't say, oh, absolutely. Just say, oh, sure. Just have whoever call me so we can just change the, change the contract. You could do it in such a way that doesn't seem like you're checking them. Just make it seem like you're just being helpful. Like, oh, you, I'll take care of it. I can talk to whoever, let me know, or do I need to sign something else? Ask an innocent question like that, and I tell you, those people will adjust their movements. Just say, oh, great, sure. Do I need to sign something different? And they say no, that will be the next red flag that it's not only that they maybe were negligent, they were probably trying to take advantage of you because you do have to sign something. There needs to be an adjustment. And if they're not willing to do that, you don't need to be in the situation or stay in the situation because we know we gotta be in places sometime where, okay, be amongst the snakes, but like the Bible says, be a dove. Like we don't need to act like the snakes, but we need to know how the snakes move. Be there and just keep very watch and care on what you are doing and presenting to them. So they're like, hey, where's that such and such? Oh yeah, I have it pretty much ready. I just need whatever paper I need to sign. So bring it up later. You don't have to fight them. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to, I, I, I see another thing in young writers. They're like, I read that such and such, or my friend said such and such. And it's like, now you're just gonna come off as a jerk. And that person might've been innocent in the situation. So just come from an inquisitive place and then record that response. I'm not saying record every scenario or like have a, like a phone recorder or whatever, but after they responded, write it down so you can then think about it later and then talk it over with a friend. Um, of course, it's great to talk it over with someone in the industry, but even just hearing yourself out loud, talk to someone helps. You kind of understand where someone's moving. So write it down exactly what they said. Send a text to yourself. I do notes all day off phone calls. Even when I'm sitting on a call, I'm writing down certain moments in the call just to kind of, okay, what just happened here? Um, so I think just being mindful of like request and then seeing, just seeing, not responding, but seeing how they respond to you pushing back on their request in any capacity. And that will be a telltale sign that this probably is gonna be a situation where people are not gonna protect you. So you can stay in it, but just be ready to protect yourself or bring someone else in to protect you. I like that. Let's take the scenario of where the person tries to turn it around on you and make it almost seem like you're the one that's the problem. So let's suppose they say, well, I only operate with a handshake and I go on good faith like that and I would hope you would trust me. Well, now that makes you feel like, oh, wow, now I look like I'm mistrustful. So you would almost want to prove to them, okay, oh, that's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. How do you, when they try to turn it around, as happened to a lot of people, and make it seem like it doesn't need to be changed or initialed or noted? I think first, um, first understand that your trust has to be rooted in truth. So trust is built. You don't owe anyone it. Like just have that stance. I don't owe trust to anyone. They have to build it and I have to build it for them. They don't have to trust me to go write and do my job. So don't act like, hey, I'm a writer. I've done such and such either. You have to come in humility, but trust has to be earned. Now you don't have to tell them that, but have that stance. So, so let's say someone says something like that where it's, well, I operate on a handshake and I hope you would trust me. Absolutely, I hope so too. So I'm gonna start writing on this and just expect that whenever you're ready, you're gonna give me a piece of paper or you're gonna put this in writing and then I can deliver it. It's just for me, man, it's so many people out here that you can trust, right? Like kind of connect with them, right? <laughs> and then they're like, what, what crazy person wouldn't be like, no, trust everyone, give them truth. That's why if your trust is rooted in truth and you stay in a place of truth, you won't come off as combative or difficult. Just stay in a place of truth. There's so many people out here, right? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so for me, I'm gonna start moving, sure, but I just can't deliver anything until that piece of paper, only because I've seen so many crazy things happen. And I don't think that would be you. Like, you know, you have to put those things in there to alleviate, you know, something that could end up being conflict, but still, trust has to be earned. So let them earn it. And also have that same stance on you. If you're not making deadlines, if you're, you know, not giving them proofs of things and showing them the type of uh, examples that they want or providing them with enough people that they can call and say, yeah, they're great. Whatever the case may be, don't be offended when they're not trusting you either. So you have to understand trust, you're not owed it and you don't owe it to anyone, but still operate in a space of by building it or for building it, I'm going to just kind of confront them with truth, not in confrontation in a negative way. So I would say that's the way to deal with it. Just kind of respond very graciously, but also then bring them a truth that they can't disagree with, which is, there's a lot of crazy things happening here, right? And then go from there.